Well, I know that uh, a lot of you are waiting and waiting and waiting for the message. <clears throat> That's why we have new people here today. You, you, you enjoy our special music, which is great. But also, there's somebody here that needs to come up, along with her mommy and daddy. Oh, I didn't see her little dress. She can bring that. <laughs> Let you all stand on that side. Hi, how are you? Did I scare you this morning? <laughs> She's gonna keep an eye on me, all right. She knows something's happening. She isn't normally up here. All right, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. So saints of the faith, I present Alice DeVoe Lever for baptism. Now on the behalf of the whole church, I want to ask you to, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And if so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And if so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. And if so, say, I do. I do. According to the grace given to you, and will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And if so, say, I will. I will. Will you support and encourage them in their Christian life? And if so, I will say, I will. Do you as Christ's body, because you are representatives and witnesses here, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, and if so, say, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care, and if so, say, we will. We will. Now repeat after me. With God's help. We will proclaim the good news, we will proclaim the good news. and live according, live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God to be found faithful. In their, service to in their service to others. We will pray for them, we will pray for them. that they may be true disciples, may be true disciples. Who, walk in the way who walk in the way that leads to life. So let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scripture of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? And if so, say, I do. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And if so, say, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? And if so, say, I do. Let's pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept over the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. 
their children you brought through the Jordan into the land which you promised. And in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. So pour out your Holy Spirit. And we ask that your Spirit would bless this gift of water and those who receive it. Little frowny face. <laughs> to, waste, to wash away any sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised in Christ, they may share in their final victory. So all praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen and amen. Okay. Hi. <laughs> She's going to fight this. <laughs> Alice DeVoe Lever, I baptize you. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> All right. We now have a new member of Christ's church, and I want to present her to you. Her name's Alice, as you may have noticed, named after Paige's grandmother, who just passed away. Alice was born, uh, oh, where's the date? <laughs> August, 15th. August 15th, yes. Just last year. She's a wonderful little girl. Very cute. She even came to our New Year's Eve party. I see that she's gained a little weight since she was here. <laughs> but this is the one that you need to lift up in prayer. This is the one that is going to be with us, whether here or somewhere else. She is with us and with you all in your heart and in your mind. She's precious and her parents love her to death. Of course, her middle name, DeVoe, is from her grandmother. That was her maiden name. And it's very interesting, isn't it? So she gets to carry both families' names. So as, as you think of the children, let her represent all the children in this community. She's precious in our sight. She's precious to Jesus. She's precious to her mom and dad and grandparents, aunts and uncles who seem to be here. So <laughs> we are so blessed to have them here. Welcome, little Alice DeVoe Lever. You may applaud. <laughs> I was told she's going to do a raspberry, and I was waiting for that. <laughs> um, wait a minute. <laughs> the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born through water and spirit, you may be faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now it is our joy to welcome her again, the new sister in Christ. So applaud. <laughs> It is through baptism you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of Christ's holy church and the family of God. God of grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you and by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Little Alice, God love you. All right, thank you very much. <sighs> well, we can go home now, I guess. <clears throat> well,
we have a um, a video on March second. Portions That's of fine. Indiana. <laughs> See, I told you. <clears throat> Uh, this month, our ministry is Matthew 25 ministry, so uh, as you bring in things to, to the church to share with that uh, organization, let's show you this video. On March 2nd, portions of Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky were ravaged by tornadoes packing winds of over 150 miles per hour. Houses were ripped from their foundations, towns were wiped out, Thousands lost everything. Three days after the tornadoes, Matthew 25 Ministries was there. In Moscow, in Henryville, in Piner and Potown, in West Liberty, in Chelsea, in Holton and Frenchburg. We'd like to thank all of you that have given your support, either by financial donations, by giving products, or even by volunteering your time, because all those things are very important. And we're going to be here for the long haul or help so much. Thank you so very much and God bless you. Wherever there is need, Matthew 25 Ministries is there. Matthew 25 Ministries. We help people. Of course, uh, many of you know, <clears throat> pardon me, that uh, Don and I live down in New Richmond. And that night, <clears throat> there was a family that lives down in Moscow. They live up on the hill. And uh, this one man and his daughter came to our house because they couldn't get to Moscow. And we sat there for a while, and his mother-in-law and other daughter were still in the house. In fact, they had talked to them before the, the tornado hit and uh, thought that they were still fine, just maybe without electric and all. So uh, we got our flashlights together, and I drove him down, and uh, we went up on the hill just outside, and it was so devastating that night. I mean, it was, it was almost like you could see everything because it was, must be moonlit or something because we needed flashlights to see if you're walking over power cords or through trees, but uh, you could still see the sky and what damage had been done. And we walked all the way up the hill because we couldn't drive. We had to take a shuttle just to Moscow from Point Pleasant. And um, no one was injured and his family, and then I will walk back out and came home. But uh, until you've been in those areas, you don't realize how much damage a, a, a tornado can do. And I know that there are many organizations that came in and helped in Kentucky and Ohio, and, and Matthew 25 Ministries is just one of those, but they also need to replenish their funds. When they have a, a flood down in Texas, Louisiana, a hurricane hit in Florida, they're packing up trucks and they're going. So I uh, encourage you to, to replenish their wells. And so if you can give to the ministry this month, uh, just talk to Debbie Lever. So. And I want to and truly encourage you to, to pray for that little girl that we just baptized today, her and her family. And not only her, but all the children that she represents. We're in a spiritual battle uh, for the hearts and souls of children. They're being coerced and manipulated in our culture, our schools, and the media, and by politicians. I'm sorry to say, even some of our churches. We have to be careful. It's all done in the name of diversity and political correctness. But I've got to say God's word. God's word is what the truth is. And that's what we build our foundation on. That's where we go in the storms of life. And that's where we turn to for our daily bread. Each and every day. Make it a habit of studying God's word. I, I like the story in, about the little boy who was asked what B-I-B-L-E stood for. And he said, well, it's basic instructions before leaving earth. That's a good idea. There's a, it's an instruction book for how we should live, how we conduct ourselves. And uh, as another plug for the Truth Project, if you would like to be involved in that, you've missed a couple, but I'm sure you can pick it up. So we'd love to have you here tonight for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for children because they're all such a treasure to us. It's new life. And there's so much joy to be had in them. 
So allow us to be the people of God to build into those children. And wherever we find ourselves, whether it's a neighbor kid, troop leader, a Sunday school class leader, whatever it is, because you're counting on us to give them the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And it is truly a special day with Alice's baptism. And so it seemed only fitting to remember the other children who were dedicated to God. Of course, reading through the Bible, we see that many children have been dedicated to God over the years. <clears throat> All Israelites were to dedicate their children to God. That was just a given. But there were some who had a special dedication. There was a man named Elkanah who had two wives. And men, if I haven't told you before or you haven't heard it, this is never a good thing. One wife is sufficient for anybody. <clears throat> so, uh, so mark that on your little to-do list, one wife only. <clears throat> one of the women, Peninnah, had children by Elkanah, but his other wife, Hannah, she didn't have any children. Hannah grieved the fact that she was unable to have a child of her own, and it didn't help that Peninnah, well, she would throw it in her face that she has so many children. So year after year, it went on. Finally, Hannah went to the temple, and she prayed this to the Lord. She said, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. This would be what we consider a Nazarite vow. It's mentioned in the book of Numbers. God did bless Hannah. And she became pregnant and gave birth to a wonderful baby boy that they named Samuel. And after he was weaned, this boy Samuel, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah, a flower, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord of Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy Eli and said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, talking to the priest, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I ask of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For, this, for his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. This is a serious dedication to God. The priest Eli actually raised this boy Samuel for most of his life. Samuel grew to be a prophet and anointed Israel's first two kings. If you remember the King Saul and King David, Samuel became a faithful servant to God. There was another child dedicated to the Lord back in the book of Judges. That was before Samuel. However, this uh, came about a little differently, but it was under a similar, similar situation. The man's name was Manoah and his wife, who didn't have a name. I'm sure she did, but it wasn't mentioned in the Bible. Um, she was childless. This man may have had been smarter than Elkanah that we mentioned before because it only mentions one wife. <clears throat> the scriptures don't say if this woman was praying, but I have to believe that she was praying for a child. Because in verse 3 of chapter 13 in the book of Judges, it says this. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are sterile and childless, but you are going to conceive and have a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, and see that you do not eat anything unclean, because you will be conceived and give birth to a son. No razor may be used on his head, because the boy is to be a Nazarite, set apart to God from birth, and he will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. The word Nazarite actually means separated or dedicated in the Hebrew language. And in this case, dedicated to God. And as I mentioned earlier about the Nazarite vow. So not only was the mom not to have anything fermented or alcoholic, but her son wouldn't be able to have any of those drinks either. Or he wouldn't be able to cut his hair. This woman did become pregnant and gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. And they named him Samson. You may have heard of him. And of course, Samson upheld all the things that the angel of the Lord said for him to do. Well, not really. He fell apart. Even with all the prayer and dedication and consecration, Samson still messed up. Children will do that to you. 
he did seem to come back to God and himself at the end of his life. And, and we were grateful for that. But wow, who wants him to wait until the end? That's the thing, isn't it? Many of us parents and grandparents, we know that we strive to raise our children the right way. We, we pour ourselves into them. They become our job. And it's a good job. It's a career, lifelong. But there are forces who want to capture their hearts and their minds. So there, we're not the only influence on them. That's why it's so important to make the, that pledge as parents in the baptism covenant when you answer the questions in the affirmative. Let me repeat those once more for you. It says, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives to you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? We have that power through His Son, Jesus, or through His Holy Spirit. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And will you support and encourage them in their Christian life? These are the things that you gave the affirmative answer to. They're important questions, as important as wedding vows that you made for one another. You've made a commitment to be parents and guardians of this little one. It's your duty, your privilege, and your commitment to raise him or her and any siblings in the truth of God's Word. You'll make sure of their religious foundations and not leave it solely to the pastor or the Sunday school teacher, the youth leader, or their coach. You'll let those people augment what she's learning from you, but the ultimate responsibility resides with you. Just the same as if you were teaching her about how to handle money, how to drive a car, to help her with her homework, to practice good hygiene, or how to throw a ball, or how to choose a husband or wife. It's your responsibility. Will she listen to you? We pray that she will. That's all we can do, but there will be growth on her part where she will want to push past the boundaries. I don't remember the exact quote, but Dr. Dobson had this to say. He says, the time of the teenage years is like riding the rapids in a raging river. They're going to get wet, soaked, beaten up, and bruised. As parents, it's our job as to get them through those rapids safely to the other side. We can't do it for them, but we have to prepare them for it. In other words, at some point, this little girl or little boy will want to challenge what they've been taught. It's our job as parents to prepare them to handle whatever the world throws at them, even if it's defeat. There's no greater teacher than failing. So many people have failed in their lives and come overcome it and become great people. Allow them to fail as part of growing up. Don't do everything for them. Give them chances to think for themselves and, and gain some common sense and interact with life. These things aren't easy when we hate to see them get hurt, whether it's emotional or physical. And I know it, it doesn't get any easier to watch those same children trying to raise their own children because we know how to do it better. We worry. My mom says that's her best gift that God gave her was worry. She uses it all the time. Well, what we really should be doing is putting our full trust in God and, and praying over these kids, kids and grandkids, neighbor kids, praying blessings as well as protection and wisdom. So don't let what I'm saying discourage you because there are so many blessings in raising children. And I know Dave and Paige will do great and Alice will be, be a joy to them as they grow old in their old age. You know why? Because, because you've claimed her for Jesus. This whole fellowship did. 
That was one of the questions for you all. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and, and life and include these persons now before you in your care? That's not just Alice you're talk, taking on. You're also to nurture these parents. We need to find ways that will help you and other families as they attend this fellowship. It's our pledge to you. So let's look at one more child's dedication. It's found in the second chapter of Luke, verses 21 through 40. <clears throat> it says, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves, or two young pigeons. As I said before, if you were Jewish, your children were to be dedicated to, the, to God. And the parents were to raise them, knowing all the ways of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit... He went into the temple courts when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, before we get to what Simeon said, let me remind you that all of Israel had been looking for a Messiah, one to deliver them from the control of the Romans or any other oppressor. They wanted their independence and to worship God not to be forced to worship any other gods. And I also did you notice that, that God's Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. The Holy Spirit revealed that he would see the Lord's Christ, the Messiah that they'd been waiting for. And because of that, he went to the temple and he saw this baby. He must have passed so many babies that day. But this is the one. The Holy Spirit has been active with Mary and Joseph, the prophets, the scriptures. The Spirit is instrumental in our day-to-day -day life as Christians. Keep that in mind, all of you parents. That when you're struggling with homework for your kids and you don't know the new math, and you have a load of laundry that's piling up higher and higher, and you've now got more hours to work, you're never alone. The Holy Spirit is with you. He can help sustain you. All you need to do is call on him. So let me continue. Simeon says to God, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, now you dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Simeon can die a happy man, in other words. He's seen God's salvation, actually held God in his arms. Did you catch that? Did you notice that this isn't just a light for the people of Israel? This is a light unto all the Gentiles. It's a revelation. This is a word from God's Holy Spirit because, as I said in the past, the Gentiles were not looked on favorably by the Jews, Jewish people. They were right around where you would put the level of dogs, and dogs were not elevated like they are now. Simeon says that they will see God's Messiah. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that would be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There are various interpretations of Simeon's prophecy. That people will fall down and worship this little child and get back up again. Or, or that because of the truth of God, Jesus reveals that people will make the decision to turn away from him. He will be a stumbling block for many, but there are others in Israel who will lift him up. It will cause those hearts to be revealed on how much they truly follow God. 
And then also that a sword will pierce Mary's heart emotionally as much as it will pierce Jesus physically. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. So coming up to them that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jis Jerusalem. <clears throat> so there are several women mentioned in the Bible that were prophetesses. You can tell that she was like Simeon. She fasted and prayed and waited such a long time for the day of redemption, the coming of the Messiah. And then she sees this little child and she knows immediately her, her spirit ha, has been stirred by the Holy Spirit that this is the one that she had waited for so long, the Messiah. And she thanks God for him. And when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee and to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong and he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. If you notice, Joseph and Mary fulfilled the law that had been set forth in the Hebrew Scriptures, our Old Testament. They did what was supposed to be done for the consecration of Jesus and the sacrifice of purification for Mary. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17, in fact, it's in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus would give to his followers. Jesus says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them as his parents had fulfilled their part. Jesus had to fulfill the mission of growing up fully man. He had to be the perfect man, without blemish or without sin. He grew up and became strong, just like any man. I mean, he was filled with wisdom. Hopefully, all of us will be filled with wisdom, although I have my doubts on some. If you look through Facebook, you'll notice who they are. But Jesus was gifted with extraordinary wisdom beyond what we could comprehend. And the grace of God was upon him. Jesus had a mission to, to fulfill. He needed to redeem God's people. To be the one to bring us into the right relationship with God. It's not just affirming. We can't just affirm that Jesus is God and that he is Lord. But it, we have to repent of our sins and make a change in our attitude toward him. We need to realize this isn't just a decision. It's a, it's a gift from God in the person of Jesus Christ to us to bring us into right relationship with, with God. So parents, don't lose heart. None of our children can compare to Jesus or even Samuel or Samson. But God has given these precious babies and children for a, for a short time to train them up in the way that they should go. So study the Bible as a couple and as a family and as a fellowship. But pray that your children will be filled with God's wisdom and His grace. As Daisy and Brandon lead us in our last song. Maybe you haven't given Him all of you. This could be a Sunday that you would want to rededicate yourself or come to Him the first time. Maybe there's an issue with health or just stress for work, whatever it would be. I'll be here to pray with you. So as you would stand, please.